Bridges, Baldcombe, Hayward Heath, Wibblesfield, Burgess Hill, Attucks, Preston Park and Brighton. My name is Daphne Burgess Collins, and I am coming to you from Moulton, Alabama, which is um, a very small town where um, quite a few of my family members um, were born either here or in the surrounding area. And I am presenting an altar today, which is um, called Altar to the Matriarchs. And it is something that is near and dear to my heart because it is actually kind of part of work that I have been um, doing in my own art practice for some time now. And I really took this opportunity to kind of bring some elements together. And I wanna kind of walk you all through these, um, these pieces, these images that you see here um, on your screen. So I'm just going to kind of step aside here and start with kind of telling this story of some of the amazing women um, in my family. So this altar um, was truly a piece that um, developed organically for me. As, as I mentioned, I've been creating new collections of work based on traditions. And it was a wide range of different things from food traditions in the Black family to um, traditional um, roles that some identify as female roles or women's roles. Um, to my own kind of place in my family. And this altar is dedicated to the matriarchs, both on my father's side and on my mother's side. And they have become a huge influence on my present work as a visual artist. Um, I moved here to Alabama about four years ago. And this kind of connection to the places and these cultural artifacts, which I'll go into um, in a minute here, has really kind of changed my view about art and um, just life and, and things that I personally um, want to do and, and get out of the work that I do. Um, there are several elements here that I have been incorporating into my practice that have really brought inspiration um, for several different themes that I, that I just mentioned. Um, and for my altar presentation today, I'll be taking you through some of these images. And as the term that I used um, a moment ago, cultural artifacts, I tend to use that phrase instead of using the word objects, because I feel that these tools have such a special place in history because they've been held and used by hands who really helped me make um, me the woman that, that I am today. So I always want to elevate them and give them the respect that they deserve. So this collection of things um, has really kind of um, been a process in just gathering and listening to stories that um, my mother, my grandmothers, or even great grandmothers have passed down. And um, it's really, kind of giving you a glimpse into my personal um, vision board in a way. Creating this altar has really made me think about connections between um, things differently. As I recollect on some of these um, tools that you can see on your screen now, it was really a great way for me to combine them all 
and help tell a story. Um, I'll be starting out with the area and I'm gonna kind of move this a little bit so you can kind of see as I go, this little area here um, where I have some bricks and those represent the foundation that these women, my ancestors have played um, just being very strong and supportive. And I have a light there, which hopefully you can see kind of shimmering a little bit, which um, you know shows that they've really guided the way for me and so many other women in my family. And hopefully that light will continue to shine for, for the future um, women that come along. Um, and of course, I'm here in what many people call the Bible Belt. So I have this cross that represents their faith that um, <clears throat> so many of them have drawn on to you know, provide that strength. And that is something that has always been a part of my life. And it represents that belief in a higher power, um, whatever or whoever that may be or mean to you as an individual. Um, so that's what those elements here um, represent. And I also have some quilts. You can see I have some um, right there and then down here on this little quilt rack. Um, I've been incorporating quilt imagery in my work for well over a decade. And I incorporate those pieces to really um, represent the creativity and the um, attention to detail and the talent of um, these women in my family. I have been using this um, kind of patterns and textures and designs um, and they manifested themselves in my work through using actual fabric, but then also painting these quilt um, patterns as well. And I use the, these quilts to represent this warmth and comfort and the desire to have something that provides a nurturing element. Because it also showcases the beautiful and artistic talent, but also this um, idea of being um, kind of um, wrapped in this legacy, if you will. <clears throat> so that's part of the reason why I, I incorporate, um, I incorporated the quilts here in, in my altar, but also um, in my artwork. Um, many of the matriarchs in my family worked as domestics. So working for the white families that um, <clears throat> either lived across the field or in some cases they had to travel a little ways to get to their houses and they worked by cooking and cleaning and and mending their clothes and taking care of their children so i've incorporated several items that represent that part of their lives including um there's an apron if you can see hanging in the background there and i grew up hearing these stories about young girls working in the fields and picking cotton. So I've added this huge vase here of cotton and I have them in a jar of all of these different types of beans. And I've also incorporated this artifact here, which is um, a weight that was used on a scale to help weigh the cotton after it had been picked. And in the background over here by this apron, I hope you can see, I have some metal pots and a dipper. And I often times heard stories of having to go out to the well to get water to cook and then a lot of times to bathe. Um, and so I incorporate those elements to really kind of add that um, or the story of what was left for them. Um, on one of these um, areas here in the front, I've also included um, a basket of fruit 
and I have some tomatoes there. Being out on the farm as many of them were and always having fresh fruits and vegetables to eat was so very important. And I remember as a young girl coming here to visit and my grandmothers and great grandmothers would always have tomatoes out on a plate. It was like an extra um, element to the meal. And they were always, you know, trying to offer more to accentuate whatever they had out on the dinner table. And so I remember vividly always having tomatoes out. And it was about um, maybe 12 or so years ago that I painted this painting here. If you can see, there's an image here of, it is an instrument, a guitar, but I personified this instrument. And there's a woman here sitting in a chair with her watermelon. Um, I use personification to represent not just the person, but also their character and their personality um, without necessarily showing a representational image of them. Um, and this is image of a woman sitting, eating watermelon, um, which is something that was always part of my childhood, sitting outside or going out to the back porch and cutting open the watermelon, putting in, in aluminum pans and grabbing some salt. So all of these things that were so much a part of my childhood and seeing these women that I looked up to and that helped raise me and helped scold me in, um, in some cases was so very important because all of those experiences really helped to teach me as well. And so I look at this altar really as not only a tribute to them, but also to all of the hard work and the dedication to their families and also to themselves and their creativity. And I hope you can kind of see some of that in these pieces that I chose to incorporate into the altar. amongst some photographs. And some other treasures that have actually been passed down to me. So I just want to take a moment to kind of reflect on that and um, really say thank you to them for, for everything, really, for the person that I turned out to be, for everything that they did to support their families. And I think, you know, being able to honor them is such a blessing. And I hope you um, have enjoyed my altar. And I thank you for your time and um, attention. So thank you. So Daphne, could you tell us a little about where you are um, in your gallery um, in the practice? Yes. So I am here now in my gallery space, Gallery 157. It is located, um, as I mentioned before, in Moulton, Alabama. And um, my husband and I, when we moved here four years ago, really wanted to open a space that we could um, share with the community. And more specifically, share our love of art and community building. Um, we initially used this space to um, have a gallery and also wanted it to be a connector. 
So even the name 157, the um, highway that runs through this town is 157. And growing up and driving here every summer from Sacramento to Alabama, I always knew that we were home when we would get to 157. So incorporating that into the title of the gallery just really made sense because we wanted to be that connector for people and to be a space where people could gather and enjoy art and have conversation. And so we opened in January, 2020 with um, an exhibition of work called Southern Patterns and Rituals, which was a combination of mixed media and um, paintings to really kind of be our introduction to the South. And we have continued to um, work and show work, though we now use our space um, more for studio space as we are both working on new bodies of work. Um, as I mentioned, my, my kind of art practice has really shifted from work like you see here to um, more installations and more incorporating some of these elements and really um, taking the opportunity to really examine some of these cultural artifacts and what they mean in terms of images and telling stories that really need to be told. And so that's what I've really been doing here in this space for the most part. And also just really researching and taking time to develop collections that I probably would not ever have worked on had I not been specifically in this space, so. Well, thank you, Daphne. And um, in terms of the altars that are being presented here in Sacramento, um, would you talk some about the Marshall um, <clears throat> Bailey and his work and contributions? Yes, so um, I met Marshall, Oh goodness, I think it was in 2008. And it was a unique kind of um, encounter, I guess you could say. It was a time when I was really um, starting to think of my work and um, my my art practice and then also the community work um, that I was doing as being really connected. Um, he ch really challenged me to kind of take the leap and step out on faith and focus more on my artwork, which wasn't something that I was really doing a lot of at the time. Um, I always kind of did artwork when I had time. And he, you know, really kind of um, encouraged me to, you know, just go for it and, 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 you know, be an artist for, you know, whatever that, whatever that means to, you know, us as individuals. And so um, I began creating much more than I ever had been and working on um, lots of different types of subject matter, really taking time to experiment, to find my own artistic voice. And um, Marshall was really a big part of that. Um, and then over the years, we developed, you know, this um, great friendship, you know, which started over conversations about art and kind of blossomed into you know, working together on different projects, you know, doing um, projects for the Sojourner Truth African Heritage Museum and other things out in the community. And um, I did see some elements of his altar um, that Shona had shared with me. And um, I'm looking forward to seeing um, the rest of it. I know I just saw little glimpses of it here and there, but he was really someone who pushed you sometimes when you didn't want to be pushed, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but he was um, an infectious person in that no matter um, what your 
um, like or dislike in terms of art, he was always really challenging you to, you know, go further, to, you know, look deeper and to create. And so I think that was something that I really needed at that time. So I feel like that's what really kind of drew us together um, to become friends. So great. And, and thank you so much for, um, you know, being um, a part of the altar um, project this year. And Thank as you. you are every year.